Hurricane Sally is expected to make landfall Tuesday, and CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli is tracking the storm for us. Hi there, Jeff. So Hurricane Sally has been rapidly building strength. What's the latest? Yeah, it was amazing today. So there was a big blow up of thunderstorms, tons of lightning early this morning. It built the core of this storm. And within one day, we saw the winds increase by 40 miles an hour from 60 miles an hour earlier today to 100 mile an hour winds right now. And it still could strengthen another 5, 10, 15 miles an hour before it makes landfall. It is close to the Gulf Coast right now, but it's moving ever so slowly at five or six miles an hour. Here's a close in view and you can see the center the core of the storm. And Look what happened just over the past hour or two. Big blow up of thunderstorms again around the center of low pressure. So this still has a chance to get even stronger than it is right now. But here are the latest stats. Winds are 100 miles an hour. It's a cat two. It's moving to the west northwest at six miles an hour. It's about 140 miles away from Biloxi. Now the forecast track touring the day today has changed. It was going to be moving westward towards New Orleans. as You can see right here southeast Louisiana. It will initially move in that direction, but then all of a sudden take a curve to the north. And instead of making landfall around Waveland, Mississippi, now it's going to probably be around Pascagoula, Mississippi, give or take. That's to the east of Biloxi, just to the west of Mobile Bay. And that is a worst case scenario for Mobile Bay because look at that wind pushing the water directly into the bay lane. So the worst impacts, um, what will they be? Who's going to be hit the hardest? So it's going to be exactly where we pinpoint the track of this storm right here. So places like Biloxi, east to Mobile, and now Pensacola. Because remember, everything is shifted towards the east. That also means things will be better in places like New Orleans. They'll be on the edge of the rain. This is the drier side of the storm right here. But from Biloxi to Mobile, all the way to Pensacola, look at this shading. This gray shading is 18 inches. This black shading is two feet of rain. Some places will see more than that. And we're going to get back to a more uh, detailed rain map in a second, but I want to show you the wind. Where you see the white developing, watch how it gets more and more extensive and it wraps around the center of low pressure just to the east of southeast Louisiana. Look at how solid that core is. If this were to happen, we're talking probably cat three winds. And notice because of the counterclockwise flow around this storm, as it moves northward, it's going to force water into this corner. Notice, Elaine, this right angle to the coast right there. That means the water has nowhere to go. It gets forced into this triangle, very shallow water, and that raises the water up. So we're generally going to see four to seven feet of storm surge. However, into Mobile Bay, any of these nooks and crannies, likely at least nine to 10 feet of storm surge. So this is going to be deadly storm surge. And I do want to for a second compare it to Laura. Remember, there are a lot of folks who thought Laura wasn't a big, we made it into a big deal and it didn't turn out to be a big deal that the storm surge wasn't nearly as high as we thought it was. Well, first of all, it did turn out to be around 16 feet, but it was in a fairly unpopulated area. That will not be the case this time. There's a lot of population all along this coastline. So we don't have that uh, ability to avoid population centers this time around. I told you I'd show you another rainfall map. So where you see the gray, this is our GFS model, that's 18 inches, and where you see the black, that's 24 inches. But watch what happens when we put a, a, a more resolute, a higher resolution model on. It shifts, first of all, the storm to the east. Notice it's Mobile, Pensacola, Panama City, and look at all that black. Everybody in there is over two feet of rain. Because it's going to be moving so slowly, some folks will see over 30 inches of rain. We could break state rainfall records with this storm. And one other thing I want to show you, and this is quite amazing, is today we had two name systems that formed. We have Paulette right there. We have Renee. Teddy and Vicky form today. The next storm is Wilfred, and then we run out of letters in the alphabet that we use for hurricane season. So we don't use X, we don't use Y, we don't use Z. That means we have to start with the Greek alphabet. We are three weeks ahead of record pace, a lane in the Atlantic. So just like everything else in 2020, the hurricane season is also unprecedented. It was just remarkable to see those pictures uh, of those other storms. Um, so what is the latest, Jeff, uh, research telling us about hurricanes and climate change, specifically how quickly storms like Sally intensify? Right, so there has been research, in fact, a pretty decent amount of research on rapid intensification that has been increasing over the past few decades because of warmer waters. Ocean heat content, which is the amount of heat 
capacity that the ocean has has been going up each and every year it hits a new record. And so because of that, we've seen rapid intensification go up by four to five miles an hour each decade. So from the 1980s until now, we've seen that increase by, you know, a good probably 15 miles an hour more rapid intensification with these storms. Now, it's not just rapid intensification, and that's bad, by the way. Rapid intensification is bad because Things, these storms tend to form right before they, they make landfall oftentimes, and people don't have uh, you know, as much time to prepare, just like this storm. This storm's really getting going, and it's already close to land. This rapid intensification is happening when it's almost too late to kind of react to it. But there's also you know, a lot of climate change research on the fact that storms are already getting more intense, probably about you know, a 30% better chance now than in the 1980s that a storm would make the jump from a Cat 1, Cat 2 run-of-the-mill hurricane to a Cat 3, Cat 4 major hurricane. And it may not seem like a big deal, but it's a huge deal because 85% of damage is caused by storms that are of Cat 3 and higher. So most of the damage is caused by those. And also, just about all the research agrees that hurricanes will continue to get stronger into the future. The only thing we are not clear of right now is whether or not there'll be more or less hurricanes in the future. But certainly this year, we're seeing, we're on pace to probably see the most active hurricane season on record. Well, before we let you go, Jeff, the Trump administration has hired University of Delaware professor of climatology David LeGates to a top position at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association. Now, on a radio show today, he said that he doesn't deny climate change exists, but he questioned the scientific consensus that carbon dioxide was the culprit. Mm -hmm. culprit. He said it could be water vapor. What kind of impact could his hiring have on NOAA? Yeah, you know, so I don't know too much about him, Elaine, to be honest with you. Uh, but I, 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 you know, I, I obviously run in climate circles. Uh, I, I see all the information in, in oh. climate change and all Oops. the movers and the Sorry. shakers. And, and, and people are, are concerned. People in the climate community are very concerned about um, him being there. And, and one of the reasons is NOAA is really one of the premier agencies in the world which has you know, informed the science of climate change, not just in the United States, but all over the world. And when, when people get into to NOAA that are climate deniers and, and there's all kinds of different denial going on, uh, it really does compromise the, the agency. It, it may very well mean there's less research that comes out of there. It may mean certain programs that NOAA is doing stop um, so there's a lot of things to be concerned about, and I can tell you a lot of people in the climate community are very concerned about it. All right, Jeff Berardelli for us. Jeff, thank you very much.